What's going on guys and gals? Stock Chuck here and we're just going to do a short video about CYCC. Today CYCC was the day trading king and I just want to talk about why it popped up and why it suddenly is just getting destroyed here. You can see on the one minute. I mean we just we were up at $11 and boom like what caused this move? And if you were following me on stock twits, I warned y'all, I warned y'all. If you watched my video yesterday, you would have kind of seen my thesis of why this stock is up and shouldn't be up and blah, blah, blah. So we'll go over it. So CYCC, it had news out yesterday. This is the daily chart down here. It had news out yesterday that it had some positive preclinical data on, I think it was a cancer drug. I don't even know. I can't even remember. Um, but it was positive news on a preclinical trial data. Like, people, you have to really see what the news is to see if it justifies the move the stock is making. This is not a phase one trial. This is not a phase two trial. This is not a phase three trial. This is a preclinical, pre-phase one data set that came out. I mean, okay, so it's a thesis all it is is a thesis and it's saying okay we think we have something here maybe we should start a phase one trial on it okay so there's years and years of trials that have to go on before this thesis can ever become a drug potentially a drug I should say and there's chance that it will fail at phase one phase two phase three and then even if it passed all of those phases there's a chance that this drug, potential drug, the FDA won't clear. Okay, so keep all that in mind. Okay, so this company, super small biotech company, put out positive news yesterday on preclinical data. Okay, so that preclinical data is not strong in any stretch of the imagination. Sure, it might give a stock a quick pop, but there should be no sustained move because of preclinical data ever, in my opinion. But yesterday, the move was crazy. It goes from, you know, it goes from 375 from the day before all the way to $6.60 on preclinical data. Now, why did this move like it did? If it was if it was just preclinical data, stock jock, why is it just ripping? Well, part of it is is the fear of missing out. So it starts taking off, right? It starts ripping higher yesterday. And people start getting it in, and the new traders see that the stock is ripping, so they throw their money in, and it pushes it higher. And there's nothing to keep this stock in check yesterday, meaning shorts really couldn't short this yesterday. There's just no shares available. E Trade, huge broker, right? Didn't have any shares all day long yesterday to short the stock. So that means that buyers, long players, have the upper hand really. And I'm, I'm sure other platforms had a hard time getting shares to short as well. So that just allows these longs to push this higher and higher and higher and higher. doesn't matter if it was crap news, they were just free willy nilly able to push this thing higher because there was no short sellers that were able to keep it in check. They just couldn't. There, are, Yes, there are some brokers that are, you know, probably had shares available, but I guarantee you not very many. All right. so. Longs just push it higher and higher and higher. Then come to today, today, right? So today, out of the gates, we, uh, you know, pre-market, it was it hit a high of $9.20, right? Out of the gates, what does it do? It sells off. And then we kind of, and it kind of fills the gap here. So this is kind of a technical play. And then you see people come in here and they buy this curl. And, you know, these people right here, they're, they're, they're playing it as a gap fill probably a smart at least it's a smart play it, you know if you were going to play this stock you know it made a huge move the day before it filled the gap for the most part uh, after it gapped up and now they're looking for it to rip higher and that's kind of what happened so now the people that didn't get in yesterday or did make money on it yesterday see that oh my gosh it's ripping higher now oh my gosh it just went high a day it broke this level right here 865 Oh, I'm getting in. I'm going to throw my money 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 in. And again, it's up on garbage news. People aren't really looking at what is moving this stock. 
the retail investor right now, the dumb stay-at-home guy that has no idea what he's doing, that just sees a stock roaring up, throws his money into the pot hoping, and hope is not a strategy, that he can get some of this action because he fears that he's going to miss out and it does go higher and go higher and go higher and go higher. And then all of a sudden, boom, what happened here? What happened here? Well, let me tell you what happened here. Adam F. dropped the bomb on it. Okay, so yesterday I was saying garbage company, just garbage news. Why is this stock up? It's still ripping. People are still buying into it for some reason. Well, I don't hold any clout. I'm just a YouTuber. I'm a stay-at-home day trader. That's all I do, right? I have a f uh, few hundred people on stock twits that follow me. A lot more now after this call. And I have some YouTube followers. And people ask me on occasion about trading advice. I'm a small fish. Well, Adam F., he's a big fish. And a lot of people hate him because they think that he only puts out stuff on social media to drop stocks so he makes money. It's not what he does. You can say it all day long, but that's not what he does. I can't stand the guy personally. I honestly can't. I can't. I just don't. I don't like him personally. I, I don't know him, but we don't see eye to eye on pretty much anything. But I respect him for what he does. He is a huge guru when it comes to biotech pharmaceutical stocks and their analysis. If you don't follow him on Twitter, you need to because that is exactly what happened in this case. He tweets out right here that CYCC, and I'll, I'll, I'll roll up the screenshots of his tweets. CYC, and I'll just, you know, in short, say what they were. Garbage company shouldn't be up this much. Regulators need to get a hold of small cap biotech stocks uh, and that sort of thing. He put out three different tweets. And um, he's right. This stock is up from 375 to $11, 300%-ish, somewhere around the 250, right? In two days on garbage news. I, I don't agree personally that regulators should step in, but he's right that it's up on stupid news, okay? So finally, when he tweets out, people listen because he knows what he's talking about. He does this for a living. He's a big name in biotech analysis. He's a huge name in biotech analysis. So right after he tweets it out, boom, what does the stock do? It sells off, sells off, sells off. And you still see people on freaking stock twits and Twitter bashing Adam F, saying, oh, he only does it to make money in his own pocket. I and mean, they're bitter because they're probably bag holders now because they bought into the hype that this stock is going for the moon, they're gonna make a ton of money on it, and they're bitter, and I get that, and I really do hate watching people lose money. I, I, that's why I started my YouTube channel, that's why I started posting on StockTwits, is because I want to help people make money, or I wanna help people not lose money. And I've been posting it all day today, especially when Adam Neff tweeted, you know, I was like, guys, it's gonna drop, it's gonna drop now, because when Adam F. talks about a stock, people listen. He does it about usually large cap bio or um, mid range, mid, mid cap bio that actually have products that potentially become could come, become drugs or companies that could be bought out. That's his main focus, and he doesn't mess with small cap very often because they're not worth his time. There's so many of them out there, but this one was unavoidable. That's why he commented on it today. The stock is up 250% on no news, right? On like no news. If a large cap bio, for instance, would put out the same information that this this company did, it wouldn't move. You got to put it in perspective. It just wouldn't move because no one cares. Like, you know, the big hedge fund guys, you know, all those dudes that follow biotech, they'd be like, okay, that's something to keep our eye on four years from now. <laughs> after it goes through some phase one, phase two, phase three trials, you know, we'll watch it along the way. But preclinicals, mm, nope, doesn't matter. <sighs> and and to put it into more perspective, look at the company, all right? This is from Yahoo Finance, and I'll put that up there. All right, 
lost millions of dollars in 2013, 2014, 2015, right? Didn't even, rep I don't have anything from 2016 yet. Nothing up there. Like, there's nothing going for this company. So why are people buying it? I mean, when you buy shares, right? Especially if you're a swing trader or you want to hold long term. Why are you buying into a company right now that's put out just, you know, average company update news, basically? Like, why are you buying that? It's It makes no sense. There's no rationale to buy this stock right now, okay? Even if you thought that the preclinical data that would lead to eventual drug four or five years from now, right? Why would you buy now? You know the company is going to have to do an offering, especially if the stock is up 250% in two days. They're going to take, they're going to cash in. Be like, okay, uh, let's cash in, let's do an offering, and let's pay for some some clinical trials with this uh, ridiculous move that is up right now. I mean, you know that's going to happen. And if maybe you are a long-term investor, maybe you buy in then. You know, when you can get a decent price. Why would you buy up here? It's a it's still up 33% on the day, and that's after it completely tanked. All right? Ah, so, again, you might hate Adam F., and that's okay. I completely understand that. But don't tell me that he doesn't have any credibility. Okay? His tweets, he didn't make a phone call. He didn't put, he didn't write an article on this. He tweeted what is, what is Twitter, 140 characters? He tweeted about this company, and it dropped from $11 to $9 <laughs> in 10 minutes. And then from there, I mean, we're down, we hit a low of basically eight bucks, you know, 8.13, right in there. And we're getting a small bounce right now. Maybe there's a little short covering going on, or maybe there's more noobs buying right now that, just want to be bag holders because they, they're, they're falling in love with this stock. You, you, you can't fall in love. Like I was trying to trade CYCC today. I was looking at it, and actually I was looking at it over here uh, when it was doing the curl. I was like, okay, this is kind of maybe a gap filler and an entry, and I was looking to maybe get, make 20 cents on it. Didn't get filled. I missed my fill, and didn't expect this move, right? But I wasn't getting in because this was a good company. I wasn't going to get in because I thought, hey, this this company's got something going for it. I got in because I knew that the Joe Schmo sitting at home that doesn't know any better is going to say, oh, gap fill. And maybe, all right, now now's the time to get in for that next huge move that we got yesterday. That's what I was looking to play. I was playing people's stupidity. I missed my entry. No big deal. And it ran without me. So my strategy was legit. If you're getting in here because you believed in the company, so to speak, that is not a good strategy. <laughs> That's not a good strategy. They don't have anything to show for. It's preclinical. Of course, pre I can't tell you the last time I saw preclinical trial data get published that was bad. Like, what's the point of it? <laughs> so people, I say all this not to bash longs, and I, I don't mean to do that. But... You got to really, in your own head, don't look at stock twits and just people posting everything because they're pumping their position. You know, don't look at that. You have to really look at the news yourself, say, is it worth the move that the stock is making? And if, if it isn't, then you have to ask yourself, why would I go long right now? Yes, this stock could have gone to $20 before Adam F. hit it. I don't. I don't even care. I won't. I wouldn't have touched it unless there was a legit kind of reason on my side, like like my little you know thesis here of getting in at this point because I thought noob traders would get in. But really, this move is not justified. Uh, I pointed that out in my video yesterday, and you know the only difference between me and Adam F is millions of people or hundreds of thousands of people listen to Adam F when he talks. No one, a few hundred, maybe a few thousand, listen to me when I talk. Okay? That's the difference. So if you don't follow Adam F on Twitter, you need to because he, if you were along, he would have saved you a lot of money.
because you would have known to get out when he tweets about a stock and it's negative. Same thing goes on the other side. Like, uh, I think the last stock he talked about was AUPH that he was positive on. And everyone talks about how he's negative on stocks. AUPH is one that he uh, was is, is very positive on, and he can move. He moves those stocks. Yes, he is wrong from time to time. Guess what? All all people that uh, analyze companies are wrong from time to time. Does he get more way more right than he gets wrong? Absolutely, and that's why people listen to him. Absolutely. No one has a crystal ball. No one has a 100% track record, right? Zero people do. Even the hedge fund guys that said VRX was going to get tanked, right? They nailed that one, but they've missed quite a few since then. So don't tell me that he doesn't have any credibility. He has plenty of cred. You might hate him, and I can understand that. I honestly can understand that. But more times than not, he is correct. So anyway, CYCC, that's why it tanked today. Uh, if you're not familiar with it, um, he's a big he's a big dude in the bio stock realm. You need to follow him on Twitter because his words move stocks. His articles move stocks. He writes for the street all the time. So anyway, uh, I expect CYCC to either do an offering if for some reason the noobs get a hold of this thing and it pops back up, I, I expect them to do an offering. Or if they don't do an offering, I expect to see this to uh, tank over the next few days. I, that's what I, that's my prediction. That's what I see. Who knows? I could be wrong, but that's what I'm predicting. So uh, crazy move today. A lot of people lost money on CYCC, and I just felt like I needed to put out there why it was moving like it did and just just uh, cover it a little bit and maybe shed some light onto it. The honest trader will will listen to these words and take them and not just think I'm pumping. I don't. I have no position on it. Zero position right now. This is my this is my positions. I have zero positions on it. I didn't even trade it today. I traded EVOK, GLBS, and AUPH. That's all I've traded today. I'm up seven hundred eleven dollars. Okay. I I'm just calling balls and strikes from the outside. So. Anyway, that's all I have for that. I'll do my daily recap on the stocks that I traded in a later video, but I just wanted to get this one out on CYCC. All right, take care.